Hi, everyone. We are here with our virtual Five Factors 5K. Day and five. day five. Day five. Yes, our fifth day of the Five Factors virtual 5K. And we are thrilled to be joined by Dr. Basanji Sellers uh, for this session. She is going to be um, walking us through her book, uh, which is entitled Postpartum Funny, reading a few excerpts from that. And um, Anne and I will throw in some questions there and have some conversation, but mostly we just wanted to give Basanji an opportunity to highlight her experience and her book um, and share that with our broader audience. Oh, we do have one person. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to introduce Sandy and then turn it over to her. Um, so Sandy is a mom. She is an author of Postpartum Funny, as I mentioned. She will be sharing entries of her books that have served almost like a journal chronicling her journey through motherhood. This book is so relatable on so many levels to parents and speaks to our mission here at PCANC around how parenting is hard. And um, it's okay to admit that. Uh, we wanna kind of reduce some of the stigma around asking for help um, as a parent. So Basanji is an excellent testament to that with this book. So Dr. Basanji Sellers received her PhD in developmental psychology with a focus on lifespan development from the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. Her research investigated the role of social support throughout um, development with regard to physical and psychological health and well being. After a postdoctoral fellowship and four years as an assistant professor of psychology, where she taught courses in child development um, and human services, Dr. Sellers transitioned from academia to becoming a full time parent and homeschool teacher for <laughs> young children. <laughs> you can visit her website at <laughs> www.postpartumfunny.com. Welcome to Sanji. Yay, Thank you so hello, much. Hello. <laughs> about kind of what compelled you to, to write this book? Um, well, that's a that's funny. Um, well, very very silly and kind of a little bit like wonky, but in a good way. I'm really wonky in a really fun way. And so when I got married, they thought, oh, that's funny. And then when I said I was having children, they were like, oh, this is going to be hilarious. And I was like, no, it'll be good. And my friend, she said literally to me, she said, I want to be a fly on the wall in your house when this happens. And I said, okay. And so I just started kind of blogging every single day, like some of the stuff that happened. So that way they could kind of be a fly on the wall of my house and I could kind of get my thoughts out. And it turned into this thing that it was every day and I had it and I was like, oh, what am I gonna do with this? And then it turned into this book, but it really just started with a friend who commented on the fact that she thought this is gonna be insane. And I was like, it is insane. So. Yeah, that's how it all started. And it's been a wonderful journey. It's our, my kids are seven and five now. I can't believe I have to just like actively remember that. They're seven and five, but yeah, it's still, yes, it's amazing. <laughs> you were homeschooling before COVID. Um, yes. Now everyone, a lot of people are homeschooling, but um, yeah. how, how are things going uh, for your family during this time? So far, so good. I think we were lucky that we started before, so we didn't have to do a whole lot of changes. Like we don't go to the museum anymore, and so we had to kind of like build a museum in our house. <laughs> but overall, it's been it's been nice. We kind of we are not like um, we're not like intense. Like let's do this. You're gonna graduate high school by the time you're twelve. We kind of roll with what they like and and their ability levels and make sure that they're happy and make sure that they they understand the material. But it's so far so good. They kind of roll with it, and they also don't know what real school is like which is also a nice advantage too so they can't say you know mom in real school days oh, nope everything's kind of whatever we set up here so we show them videos every once in a while but i don't think they believe that it they don't believe us <laughs> we try to tell them about our experience and they like they don't believe us like you know walking a line with a teacher and like 30 other kids i don't believe you mom ah, like never mind then. 
Ms. Angie, do you have any advice for anyone, any parents out there that are, are new to all of this in the homeschooling? Any pearls of wisdom you can impart? <laughs> um, a few. TV is not always so bad. <laughs> like sometimes everybody needs a break. You can watch a little bit of television. Let the kid watch some television and take a minute and breathe. Don't try to be perfect. It's, it's hard. Homeschoolers will tell you it's hard. Um, if something's not working, stop. Like, don't try to keep going. Like, we're going to learn your times tables. No, we're not. Nobody's learning anything right now. If they're no, nobody's happy and everybody's yelling, just stop and give yourself some credit. And just remember that they're kids. Like kids are just, they see the world differently. Imagine when you were in school and you were, you know, eight or nine, what did you love about school the most? And most likely it's something that you, you can recreate at home, whether it was like the pizza at lunch or whether it was that you got cookies after you did a lesson. Like remember what you loved about school and then try to impart that to your kids. Cause that'll be really, that'll probably be the part that they remember the most. I love that. Great. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I am anxious to just dive right in um, to our first entry. Will you read hormones for us. I will. <laughs> While I read hormones. Yes, I will read hormones. <laughs> okay, so um, one thing about the book, it's, it's sitting in front of me right here too, um, is that I baby time stamped everything so that way you kind of, the reader would know where we were in our journey too. So sometimes they're ongoing, meaning that it's something that never kind of went away. <laughs> Or it could be just something that was right in the moment at that age. So for hormones, the baby timestamp is ongoing. And it says, whoever said that hormones were crazy after giving birth was not kidding. People talk about an overwhelming sense of joy as well as baby blues and postpartum depression. But until you experience them, you have no idea. To put it in perspective, try doing the following in a span of five minutes. Number one, think of something neutral, like what you'll have for dinner. Number two, then think about the best dinner you've ever had in your life. Smile. Number three, then think about the last meal you would want if you were on death row. A big smile and a frown. Oh. Number four, then think about never eating again because you would be on death row. Bout of weeping. Number five, then think about all the tasty food that other people would eat. Smile again. Number six, Think about all the happy memories that you have with the people you love involving food. Cry with happiness. <laughs> Number seven, remember that you still have not decided what to have for dinner. Stop crying and slowly come back to neutral. That's what it feels like. Now imagine that happens randomly with everything from dinner to your baby or your taxes. It's no joke. Just make sure you tell the people around you what's going on. They usually understand. If not, just take the liberty of walking away without saying anything. You just had a baby. You can do that. So, yes, it's, it's, it's <laughs> about the cycle of hormones that happen and how you kind of start off one way and then you start having all these other thoughts and feelings and emotions that can kind of influence the original feeling that you had. And it cycles in a way that you can't necessarily control and that people around you may not understand. Yeah, and I, I love how you acknowledge too that, you know, I think as first time parents, you have this misconception that it's going to always be filled with joy and um, all of these perfect moments. And, and, and while there are some really great ones, there's also a lot of other range of emotions that you feel too. And being able to, you know, with this entry of encouraging parents to, to put names to it and to acknowledge it um, normalizes it. Exactly. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's really, it's joyful, but then like you, you kind of go like, what, what about me? And then, you know, and it's, it's, it's a lot of things. And I think that a lot of people have them, but then, you know, if you watch like television, they kind of don't have it. So people are like, well, if, it's not on, if people aren't saying it, then maybe it's not a thing. And it's like, it is a thing. People start saying it. And they're all doing it at home quietly. <laughs> and if you do it in public, most people won't be like, that's bad. They'll just kind of look at you and go, oh, I did that too. <laughs> and, and it's okay. You know, so, and, and it's also about like informing the people around you. So like 
my my partner knew like we had talked about it and I had been informed by another friend of mine before this ever happened she told me she was like this is gonna happen <laughs> she's like luckily my partner knows so it's good and so when it happened my partner kind of had an insight and I like gave him an article I was like this is called postpartum this is baby blues I'm sorry and he was like you need a nap and a sandwich I was like I do I do <laughs> yeah I do. And it's so sad right now. It's so ready, baby. And, and he was like, that's cool. I saw what you did. I respect what you did. Go take a nap at a sandwich. I got this. And I was like, yes. But you know, like you have those lines of defense who are like, you know, hey, something's not right today. And no, you're not. Yeah. Did that sandwich upset you? Mm -hmm, that sandwich is so, made me so mad. Like, it's okay that a sandwich made you mad, but just know that it's not necessarily a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> something else. And, yeah and I think that speaks to a couple of our one of the protective factors is social connections and this idea that you're it's so hard to do that job completely alone and it's so valuable whether it's a partner or a friend or a family member that can step in when you're not feeling your best and when your body goes through its natural course of emotions and um, hormones that there is somebody there that can um, either listen to you or physically help with a task. Um, that's, that's absolutely critical in the work that we do and what we try to build in communities for families, for sure. Exactly. And the thing is, they don't have to be an expert. They don't have to understand everything. Like my husband is not a psychologist. He's not a, he's not coming in going, yes, that's medically correct. Like, no, he's like, this is weird. <laughs> and I will help you however I can. Like, just, you know, they don't have to be an expert. They don't have to be anything. There's somebody who cares, you know, who can step in and say, you know, hey, you were just, you were just crying over there. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like, and he can kind of just acknowledge or know you know what your baseline is. And then if the, if the baseline is different, they kind of say the baseline is different. How can we kind of adjust some of this? to make it a little bit better. It doesn't be perfect. Again, it won't be perfect. Like my balance, right. you know, like, like, like my partner didn't save me for like a week. You know, he was like, look, I got 10 minutes. <laughs> what you need? I just need to sit for a second. Okay, you literally are on the clock for 10 minutes. Go. <laughs> like, I, I got it together for 10 minutes. All right, I'm back. Yeah. Not forever, but I'm back for now. You know, yeah. so it, it's not always all the time the way that you think it would be, but just a little bit, it's always, it helps, you know? Absolutely. So that's a great transition talking about crazy schedules and getting everything done. Um, will you read your next entry, which is task manager? Yes. So the task manager, the baby timestamp is five weeks. And it says, before having a baby, I couldn't understand why it was so hard for, for a new mom to shower and answer the phone. I get it. Now I understand. Let me explain. As I was burping the baby after nursing, the phone rang. I reached for it and the jolt of the movement made the baby throw up. I missed that call and had to change the babies and my clothes. I was taking my first shower of the week on Wednesday and every time I approached running water, the baby seemed to be hungry or pooping. Also, my phone rang. I missed that call. I was changing a diaper. My phone rang and I thought I would be able to catch it since I was almost done. The baby peed on the table and the new diaper and I had to start over. I missed that call. I was up at 1 a.m., then went to bed at 2.45. I was up at 4 a.m., then went to bed at 6.30. I was up at 8 a.m., and I stayed up for the rest of the morning. I finally had time for a nap at 1 p.m. 1 p.m. The phone rang at 1.15. I missed that call. I was eating breakfast at 4 p.m. I could have gotten that call, but I didn't. I was stuffing my face. So if I miss your call, don't be offended. Just imagine some crazy scenario as to why I didn't answer. You probably won't be that far off. So, so good. Yeah. So good. I just I feel, like this, it. <laughs> I feel like this is still my life. <laughs> like, I, I, I read something the other day and he was this author, he's like, if you think you want to be a parent, he's like, imagine eating a gourmet meal and then having to stop halfway through that meal to wipe somebody else's bottom. <laughs> he's like if you don't think that that would be enjoyable you may not want parenthood <laughs> and I was like oh, that happens every time I sit down and eat somebody says I have to poop oh why <laughs> yeah. just standing for five and, minutes ago but yeah no it's it's the I, it's <laughs> even those small moments 
what what they do to add to a stress load of parenting exactly it's 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 this idea that it was just a like a little thing like oh well, you know i'm just gonna do this thing and it'll be easy like change a diaper and then halfway through the diaper change you realize oh no <laughs> everything's gone wrong and you have to kind of readjust and then it's kind of like what was supposed to take five minutes all of a sudden has taken 20 minutes and then that thing that you had scheduled to do five minutes after that five minute thing is now lost in the woods and you're kind of like i did not get anything done <laughs> You know, and, and yeah. like I said, my friends who didn't have kids, they didn't quite understand. Like, they would just call me incessantly, you know, like they would see something, they'd press a Froyo stand and be like, girl, I saw a Froyo stand. And I'd be like, yeah, my phone. <laughs> 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 Stop. And just, I have pee on me. Why? Why are you telling me about Froyo? <laughs> and they wouldn't quite understand. They would just be like, this is just Froyo. Like, call me back. <sighs> no. <laughs> I'm not going to call you back to discuss this thing that you saw. Never, never call you back. Because <laughs> the minute I have to call, I literally have to call my insurance company. I have to call the bill company. I have to call this place and return a pair of shoes. And by the way, no. <laughs> and so it just, you know, it's, it's this idea that like, you know, these, you know, there was a diaper commercial one time when the people were leaving the house. They had all these things and they were packing. And then the second baby, they were like, oh, we just bring like, you know, the Cheerios. <laughs> but it's this idea that like, there's a lot of things that happen. And there's a lot of, um, what is it? it's like, um, like unspoken roles and unspoken things that you have to do in the day too. And the actual, like you said before, the stress that comes with it is crazy. And it's like, mm -hmm. and you're trying to do them all perfectly. Like, I'm going to put my kid in clean clothes. <laughs> and then halfway through, like you get the clothes on and then all of a sudden they throw up on the clothes and they poop on the clothes. And you're like, okay, well, I could change these clothes or I could send my kid out in dirty clothes. <sighs> yeah, I think, I think that's why I love, love these entries so much, Basanji, because they're great conversation starters. And I liken it to when I was a young mother, play, the play group was, great for socialization for my, my own kids, but also to be with other mothers and to be able to have these conversations that validated yeah. feelings that I was having and, and thinking that I was alone in, um, you know, in, in trying to be a parent and do all the things and, and not always doing them well and feeling sometimes like maybe I was failing, but realizing after after talking with other moms it's part of the process and it's okay and it's normal so yeah. i look to yeah. these entries <laughs> as wonderful validations and, and conversation starters to have mm -hmm. um and normalizing all of all of the feels and all of the things that you go through as a parent oh yeah i mean like i think there must be like some secret club of like mothers who are like shh don't tell the new ones <laughs> they may not join and it's like well join but like if you could possibly give all the information like you know people buy cars knowing they break down all the time right. <laughs> you just but you know you try to buy the best one that you can but you know you're gonna put gas in it and fill it up and see a mechanic but it's like people are gonna be like no babies are like they'll never break down this is magical mm -mm. <laughs> yeah and then you get it and you're like my baby's a lemon and it's like oh no they're all lemons sorry just kidding <laughs> <laughs> and that was part of the impetus too for the book it was like I had I had a few I had some really great mom friends who really told me the truth which I I loved them like I called them and said for a few I had to call and say I'm sorry because they had kids before me and I didn't understand so I said I'm oh, sorry um for the ones who had kids before me and told me the truth I called them and told them thank you and like sent them flowers and cookies because they were so honest and it was amazing because it was like I kept reading all these blogs about people who were trying to have these retrospective I counts of their of their kids when they were babies and like they're trying to understand like they're trying to talk about it now but like through a rose through a rose glass like you remember that time when you know we were on that road trip and somebody threw up in the car oh it's so funny <laughs> but I wanted to write about it like in the moment like we're on a road trip and baby threw up in the car and I'm gonna sit on the curb and cry <laughs> like, just for ten minutes we're gonna get a handle but I just need any minute. <laughs> Because yeah. we're swimming, in, we're swimming in vomit back here, and I don't want to do with that. You know, like, like it was one of those things that like it just needs to be in the moment with like what's actually happening, because that will give people better perspective of like what this is actually like. Absolutely, and, and it know, speaks to what we talk about as an organization. Like Parenting is hard, and it's okay to admit that. 
Yeah, no, it is. And like, in, in the moment, the decision that you make may not be the decision that you would have made a week later. <laughs> you know, like, like in the moment, what would you do? And some parents make good decisions and some parents make bad decisions. But it's like, in the moment, it's very different than when you sit back, like, and you go, oh, you know, if I had a chance to really think about that, you know what I would have done? It's like, <sighs> <laughs> you know yeah. like in the moment most parents think like you do just throw the clothes away and run yeah i could have put clorox in that you couldn't have you did like everybody else throw it away just <laughs> throw, it. <laughs> throw the pants away and run yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, know? you feel like sharing japanese with us yes <laughs> yay let's go to japanese because i do not speak japanese i have a friend whose kid does speak japanese and it's magical <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Japanese was written when the baby was two weeks old. So baby type stamp, two weeks. This says, I like to be in control. I like to drive wherever I'm going. I like to read the menu online before visiting a restaurant. I like to check the weather and lay out my clothes before I travel. I like to have a schedule. I like to be the captain of my ship. And while I know that it's not possible all the time, being a new mom has taught me that I have to give up control more than I ever thought. Here's a conversation that I had with a good girlfriend who has two wonderful kids, me. The mothers are coming over today to help with the baby. Friend, great, but I heard that you're not really using them to their full potential, me. I give them stuff to do and they do it, but I like to watch and make sure they do it right. I also like to walk around in circles and do random crap. Oh, and I wash the dishes too. Friend yelling, what are you doing? Just had a baby, me. I know, friend, here it is. Think of the baby like she speaks Japanese and has an instruction manual in Japanese. Do you speak Japanese? Me. Well, no, but friend, shut up. The mother speak Japanese. They may be rusty, but they know more words than you and can easily pick it up again. They can teach you Japanese, but you don't speak it right now, so back off. Me. I'm not sure. I don't know that they will remember. It seems more like German, friend, whatever. It ain't English, which is all you know right now. And they know more than you do. So sit back and take it me. Fine. The next day, the mothers came through the door. I handed them the baby and went to sleep. Apparently, they did speak Japanese and knew exactly what to do. Friendship is magic. <laughs> I have to say, this is one of my favorites because um, I just think it speaks to so many people that, that strive for perfection. Um, when they're swimming out of their lane in their comfort zone and and, and asking for help is okay. And I, I just, I love this. And that's a great friend too. <laughs> oh, yeah. she's one of the ones I had to call and say, thank you. Like, cause before she had kids, I would make ridiculous requests of her. And she would always be like, I have a baby. To hang up the phone. <laughs> and I didn't understand. And now I get it. And I could have called her and say, you know, I'm really sorry. <laughs> All the stuff I did before I had kids. <laughs> cause that was terrible. <laughs> But it, it is, it's like the social support you need of somebody who's in a situation who can say, you know, I've been there and you do need help and you do need to go to sleep. And, you know, and, and she did have postpartum, she in like full on. And she was like, if you don't get help, she's like, you may not have it. She's like, but you need help. Everybody needs help. Like just a little bit, you know, like just somebody to do something, you know, so you don't have to do that thing and you can sit down for a minute. And I was like, oh, like that, that sounds foreign and bizarre. Please tell me more, you know? She's like, just learn, <laughs> shut up and learn. And yeah, I think that it is. we, as women, don't think to ask for help or think it's expected of us to handle everything. And I think um, COVID-19 is showing women dropping out of the workforce at a faster rate than men um, because women are, you know, that second and third shift, uh, women who do work, and try to balance family mm -hmm. and keep a home and have a social life and all these things. If you don't ask for help somewhere, um, it can be absolutely overwhelming. Um, yeah. And I think that it's hard to ask for help. Um, it is. And, and even when help is there, like I didn't, you know, it was like they were offering help, but it wasn't the help I wanted. <laughs> so I was trying to control the help I had and they were just kind of like coming in and trying to be as helpful as they could and I was kind of like no 
I got this. Like I've, I've got everything else. Like I, I did all this stuff by myself and I could do this too. And they were kind of saying that like they were, they were very nice. Like they didn't stop coming, which I think is a blessing. I think there's some other people who might've been like, oh, well, I'm not coming then, <laughs> you know, but they, they kind of sat around and were like, okay, okay, honey, whenever you're ready. And my friend was like, the same way she's like, okay, okay. But now we're like, we're watching this. We're literally watching the Titanic. Like we're literally, you know, like, like the people on the Titanic were like, what's happening? And everybody who watched the movie was like, oh, get in the boat, get in the boat. <laughs> you yeah. know? Wow. That's or cause it's a plane. Yeah. No. And, and we as an organization, again, talk about how important it is to have special connections and how valuable it is for families to have those connections and yeah. your, your friends were such a valuable connection for you in providing the support that you needed. Um, and kudos for you for being able to allow them to support you and help you and get that sleep that is so crucial. Oh yeah, no, I mean, social support is, is amazing. And it's like, it doesn't have to be, you know, I think people think that your friends have to bring you like lasagna, like some of my friends just showed up like, they're like, look, I'm on my way home. Like, I, I got 20 minutes, what do you need? And you're just like, <gasps> thank you you know like I had a, like one of my brother's friends came over one day and she just brought a she brought a bouquet of flowers and she put them on the table and she said and I said oh that's so nice thank you you brought these for the room she said no these are for you and she put them on the table delivered these are for you you did a really good job now what can I help do around the house and I was like oh, see am I being punked right now <laughs> and she was like you're not being punked like you just I got you and I was like Okay, and she's like, and after this, I'm gonna go home. I'm gonna take care of my kid, but I gotta go. You know, and she's like, it, but it was just like a nice, like it's unexpected social support. But it's not always what people think it has to be. It doesn't have to be your bestie. It doesn't have to be. It's just somebody who sees you and who goes, I see you. I see that you need some help. I've been there before. I'm just do this little thing for you. And it's like, oh wow, thank you. And if you can kind of accept it, it helps a lot. Like majorly and you know some people write and a journal can be social support too you know like a lot of people like twitter or instagram but it's like you're reaching out to these communities virtual or real that can kind of give you that support that you need to kind of get through this process that you may or may not have expected to be the way that it is you know absolutely and those gestures can transcend to people that you don't even know you know opening a car door for somebody so they can put their baby in and load their groceries or um, helping in those kind of ways, a neighbor that you see. Um, yeah, even those small gestures go a long, long way. Oh man, like, you no, know, I should get a shirt. This is, I will help a mom. <laughs> like, if I see, if their kid is like crying in Target, I'll, I'll be like, the wheels on the bus. Like I've seen, I've sung wheels on the bus like a thousand times just because I know that when my kid's having a meltdown, <laughs> you know, in the store, it's always nice when a stranger who will stop your kid from crying, which it's, it's magical, it's a scientific fact, not really scientific fact, but they, they respond to strangers a different way. And so they kind of look at stranger and be like, oh. <laughs> they kind of be like, thank you for stopping the crying. Thank you for stopping me crying for just for just a few minutes, and they'll and then they'll like sing a song. Your kid will just kind of stare at them, like, "What is that?" <laughs> and you're like, oh, "For just five seconds, I had quiet." And yeah, I was like, absolutely, magical stranger. And the stranger's like, "I got you. I gotta go now." And then <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and you're just like, "But thank you for that like minute of help because that minute of help helped me to realize that I bought too much cheese." <laughs> <laughs> and it just reset and my internal like my internal stamina meter went up back again like huh yeah maybe I can take over this wheels on the bus singing and we can get out of this checkout line let's do this <sighs> you know but it is it comes from everywhere and everything and you kind of just kind of offer it up people you know sometimes people you don't know online in real life wherever it's magic yeah. well yeah. speaking of magical can we read another magical entry I miss Yes, yes. So I miss is from when the baby timestamp is nine weeks. And it says today I woke up and I missed my old life. I miss being able to roll out at a drop of a dime and not worry about feeding a baby or pumping milk. I miss having my old clothes fit. Well, I can fit all my old clothes the proportions are off with a larger chest. I miss being able to get things done by myself and not rely on the help of others so much. I miss being able to plan vacations and not worry about how to rent a car seat. I miss being able to shower and brush my teeth without stopping every five seconds to listen for the baby. 
Today I woke up and I missed my old life, but then I looked at the baby and realized that my old life was gone forever. I can't mourn it. I have to move on and accept my new life and it will be awesome. <clears throat> I'm an eternal optimist. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't tell. I couldn't tell. I love this one because I, um, I don't have my own children yet. So I'm not in this chapter of life, but I have friends that are starting to have children. And I think there is, there is no amount of preparation that it, to prepare you for the shock to the system that is having a baby. It is not just adding another little person to your life. It's like an overhaul of your life as you know it. And I think I've had a lot of friends come to terms with that and kind of grieve um, the life that they had while simultaneously being excited and grateful for their new life. It's just I think it's a, some another thing that we don't really talk about or let, or give enough space for. Um, and I, so I appreciated this um, excerpt. It is. It's like the quinceanera of like adulthood. <laughs> like yeah. you really need a big dress and a cake. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, like you know, I think people. A lot of people think like, yeah, you know, I'm just gonna have a baby. Then we'll still like go out and we'll do our thing. And it's just like. Oh no like there's just and it's not necessarily like I know some people who can do it but the thing is it's just a lot it's like it's a running ticker in the back of your mind like do we have everything we need for this little person do we have everything we need for this little person do we have everything we need for this little person and you're like okay like okay well that's good like you know I would normally go to sleep at nine but they're gonna wake up at like 10 all right that's cool like yeah no my beauty ritual says I have to spend like an hour in front of the mirror but I can't you know it's like all of a sudden, all the things that you thought could, at least some of the things that you thought you could maintain, you realize that you have to make more time and more space for them. And it's, it's a big adjustment. And it's not just like in your schedule, it's mentally, it's physically, it's, you know, like adjusting to a new body if you have a new body. Adjusting, you know, like this is what I used to wear, you know, like crop top central. And then all of a sudden, like something, ha you know, your navel looks weird. <laughs> just like, <gasps> I had to change my whole style of clothing that I never thought I would ever have to change. It's like, yeah, like things you didn't think about, you know, like the dynamic changes, all of a sudden somebody else in your house is getting the attention that you used to get and right. it may be a little bit harder, you know, like everybody used to be looking at me and now everybody's looking at that. Look at me, not that. <laughs> like you can't, you can't convince people to not look at a baby, you know? There's no, there's no YouTube tutorial that can get you around that. Like, right. and so you have to kind of get around it in your head. Like, okay, well, this is my new role. This is my new place. This is my new thing. What do I have to do to kind of feel good with myself? Like, and feel okay with myself and feel okay with this new journey and not feel like I'm losing out or missing out. Or I used to compare myself to like wild horses. Like my friends without kids were still running like wild horses. You know, they were no bridle, just running next to a train, like, you know, like the wild west. And I had like been corralled <laughs> in a saddle. And I'm like, I'm in my corral. I'm like, hey, I get hay and apples, like, but people ride me all day. <laughs> I want to run free again. And then it was like, but in a same token, like, you know, I chose to kind of get caught. You know, I was kind of like sniffing around the barn a little too hard. You know, it's, <laughs> I don't know, I was like, that wasn't my journey. Like I wasn't gonna run it anymore, <laughs> but I could still do fun stuff. Like I could now go on trail rides and oh, look, yeah. people are gonna give me sugar cubes. Right, you and know, I like, think having, having that conversation with other parents makes everybody feel less alone in that, right? Yeah, um, yeah no, just the idea that like you, you talk to somebody and they'll tell you about like, I've met so many people who told me, like it's almost like they're living a parallel life. Like I've met these other women when, when I've been out with my kids and they tell me these extraordinary stories of their lives before children. And I'm like, oh, you should tell that more often. And they're like, yeah, no, I'm just gonna stay home with the kids now. And you're just like, no, tell them about that time that you went to Peru and you skinny dipped. Like, it's amazing, there's still a part of you, but you, it's just different now. And they're like, yeah, hopefully one day I can skinny dip with my kid in Peru. You know, you're just like, that's something to look forward to. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> and and the is. other thing that it reminds me of, uh, the other protective factor, which is the namesake of our race, is this, it's a, it, it can be protective against abuse and neglect when parents and caregivers understand child development and what's 
developmentally appropriate to expect from your two-year-old or three-year-old. And I think yeah. knowing that can help you kind of manage frustration or annoyance. Like those emotions are real. You, you can be annoyed that you have to go wipe somebody's behind in the middle of your gourmet dinner. Like that's annoying. But if you understand, you know, kind of what's developmentally appropriate and that your life has shifted and you are kind of in a resilient space, that makes that, you know, handling those emotions that much more doable um, than if you didn't have that knowledge. Exactly. And, you know, like my advice to parents is always just sit. <laughs> like, it, like there's nothing that needs to be done. Like you, you want to get stuff done and you realize you're not getting as much stuff done. But sometimes you just have to sit and be like, okay, <laughs> like I am not happy or I am sad or I am mad. And then you look at the little person next to you and you go like, this has nothing to do with you. <laughs> you just got here. You just joined this party. And I've been DJing for at least 20 years. Like, nah, yeah. like, <laughs> like, it's you have to just sit and just realize like this is an internal thing this is something that everybody goes through they may not talk about it but it's definitely an internal thing that you kind of have to deal with and it's not always it's not bad to deal with it you know what I mean it's it's just something that is a shift it's a change and and it's a mental health change it's a physical health change you know mm -hmm. it's it's, a, it's a, on the, all of these different levels changes and then you start to like realize like all these other people around me have done it like this is crazy how many people have done this, you know, like good or bad or indifferent. And it's like, okay, well, if you want to do it right, just take a minute, you know, just, ah, it's okay. Yeah. You know, like, and if it's not okay, take that minute and call somebody and say, it's not okay. <laughs> I need a minute. I need, I need five more minutes and then it, it's okay. But like, that's the whole thing is creating that network that will help creating mm -hmm. those outlets that that are safe and creating that space that says it's okay and kind of warning the people around you like it's okay and if they don't like it that's okay too like your partner may not understand and that's okay you know your parents may not understand. there's plenty of parents from a different generation who don't understand and that's okay like postpartum was brushed under the rug it's okay just put on your corset and clean the house and it's not okay <laughs> it's yeah. not okay and so you can talk about it in a, in a space you know you should find a space where you can talk about it and say like i don't feel okay and especially with you know like a safe space and most likely you'll get the response that a lot of people say is not okay and that's okay you know yeah and that's, just, that's the beauty of it and i think you know the theme with all of your entries and kind of what you're talking about and it's certainly very prevalent during covid is i think as parents we have to give ourselves grace so much <laughs> so like so much you know like it's not perfect. People don't remember what you do. They remember how you make them feel. And so like, don't worry about what you did. <laughs> like, I didn't clean the house. I didn't make the beds. I didn't do the laundry, but how'd you feel today? I felt really good. Stick with that. <laughs> Stick with that. You know, like, like how did the baby do? The, the baby was really happy. They were smiley and bubbly and not a whole lot of crying. Stick with that. <laughs> Whatever it was. Stick with that. And it's like, well, you know what? I, <sighs> I didn't do this thing and I didn't do it later. How'd you feel? I felt good. Feel good. <laughs> you know, the other stuff will come, but work on feeling good first. Like if you don't feel good, it's not going to work, you know? Um, this, so this has been such a gift. And I know that um, the more people see this conversation, they're going to want to know where to find your book. So where can they find your book and continue this conversation and read more of your entries? So they can find me on Amazon and this is the cover. It's, it's lovely. It's right there. There's, there's the cover. You can find me on amazon.com and you can just put in postpartum funny, or you can go to the website and the website will link you there too. And if you don't want to buy the book, that's okay too. You can get it at the library. So it's in the Wake County libraries as well. So you can check it out there too and kind of get a read for it and then, you know, give it to your friend. <laughs> Thank you so much, Basanji. I can easily say that you em you embody you and your work embody a lot of our values here at PCA and C. And I just am grateful for your vulnerability um, and your wisdom. And I think you just need more Basanjis in the world. Um, <laughs> I've been trying to convince people to name their kids Basanji, and they're not. <laughs> <laughs>
No, not any of them. <laughs> but no, I love you guys' work too. And I think that like being a parent, especially like there was so much I didn't know before. <laughs> I don't know where I was living. I was living in the world of like school, I guess. But like organizations like you are incredible. And like they, you help people in ways that you would never imagine. And in just putting information out there to make it more realistic and making it accessible to people is amazing because it's people walk around and they don't know. <laughs> they have no clue. And so it's great when they can come to your space and get that information and kind of learn more and kind of say, oh, it's not just me. No, it's not just you. And not only that, but it's like before something else happens, you, you come in and you get the help that you need. And that's what's important. Like, you know, you have a space that says, hey, do you, do you kind of feel like this? And it's like, it's not like you have to. It's just, if you do, come on. Well, then we'll just walk you through it. And it's like, thank you for like, it's like a gentle touch to help people to go along and get better and to be more positive and to feel better. And that's like, that's, I love you. Yay. Um, well, <laughs> yeah, starting yeah. these and continuing yeah. these important conversations and we're oh, grateful man. for you joining us today. Oh yeah, no, anytime. Like you know, mom's kids, that's my jam. <laughs> they're, they're the best. You know, like, and helping other moms and helping kids is the best because I know I need good lots of help. <laughs> when people help me out, I'd be like, oh, I'm going to bake you brownies. I can't bake, but I'm definitely going to bake you brownies. <laughs> you know, like, they'll be burnt and gross, but <sighs> and it's just it's just a way to like connect with other people who are you know maybe like feeling like they're disconnected or maybe you know and it, it just made me happy like that was the thing too like I made little cards that just said you're doing a great job because I remember like how great it was for another mom to tell me how good a job I was doing yeah. even though I didn't think I was doing a good job like just to, for her to just walk up like in passing just go you're doing a really good job and I'd be like, oh, go start for the day. And it would change everything. And then I remember saying that, like, that was my job. Like, when I went out and I would see other moms, I would purposefully find moms who were just, like, trying. Like, not just trying. <laughs> put your shoes on. Please just Little put your ass, shoes on. Yeah. And I would just turn to her and be like, you know, my kid does the same thing, but you're doing a really good job. And she would be like, thanks. <laughs> like it would be like like there were like this balloon of stress and then like somebody just coming and saying you did a really good job but just kind of deflate the balloon and be like oh you're not gonna judge me or say that I'm like terrible because I have a kid with the, with no shoes on in the middle of the storm I'm like nah you get it <laughs> who cares you're trying and yeah. I'm proud of you that you know and they'd be like you know and that's it. it's just I think mean, that's what it what we kind of need it's just a place to have that an opening of a conversation to say like it's okay like instead of just walking around and sneering like it, uh, why <laughs> you know because somebody sneered at you and now you have to be sneery at somebody else that's not fair you know I didn't I didn't sneer at you <laughs> you know but instead like what you what you wish that person would have done to you is what you should do to somebody else you know like yeah. I wish they would have helped me I wish they would have said something encouraging I wish they would have you know saying wheels to the bus to my kid I wish they would have like offered to buy that lollipop even though I would have said no but it would have made you would have, it, you know like just be nice <laughs> oh that's such a positive you know? note to and end on thank way. you, you know? <laughs> yay thank you but, you so know much. this is fantastic you guys are super fun oh, <laughs> thank you, this man. you too all right you guys you yeah, no, have a great rest of the week enjoy the five thank faster you. five factors and get out there when it's not so windy and do yeah. the thing <laughs> <laughs> bye, bye. 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 <laughs>